Adam, uh, you were in the courtroom. What about that tone? Well, one thing in context for that, the thing that set Judge Cannon off before that was that David Harbach, the prosecutor who she dressed down, was getting such a tough reception even before that moment that he had made a remark that he had barely gotten one of his points across. That was what made Judge Cannon make that remark. And for all of her tone policing, when he stepped down and Trump's attorney, Todd Blanche, came up, and you've seen Todd Blanche in action, Lawrence. Uh, he gave something that would be uh, not out of place for a campaign speech for Trump, giving a view of the, the uh, gag order as though uh, this was a mere critique of the Biden administration and Biden's Justice Department. She didn't really push back on that remark. And on Friday, it was very different. You know, she had sharply pressed both sides. Uh, she had actually even questioned uh, Trump's other attorney, Emil Bove, also a uh, attorney on the New York criminal case, about his characterization of the special counsel as a shadow government. She said, uh, I don't think you that I don't know if it's right to throw aspersions, she said to him about his use of that term there now today. Blanche was throwing every aspersion in the book about the uh, about Joe Biden's supposedly secret role in the gag order. There's excuse me in the uh, search of Mar-a-Lago. There's absolutely no evidence of that, and didn't even push back on uh, Todd Blanche's characterization of Trump's comments and the fact that they were lies. Uh, Andrew. Uh Exasperation uh, can happen uh, in courtrooms, uh, but for, of all the people in, in an American courtroom to be uh, concerned about tone in a hearing that's about Donald Trump's potential threatening of FBI agents nationally, uh, something that most judges have never, ever had to consider, federal judges, they've never had to consider their duty to protect FBI agents nationally. Uh, and her worry is the tone. So that is one of many, many, many signs that she is not up to the task here. I have seen many judges in high profile matters and seen how they comport themselves. We, we all just watch Judge Bershon, mm -hmm. who is, you know, that is sort of the platonic ideal of the model. Um, here, there's so much wrong with what she did today, starting with that even if you think these allegations may not be enough to do what the government wants, you would not decide to hear this a month after the allegations are raised. This should have been heard promptly. Second, her comment that was, well, you know, there's nothing about these agents on this case that I need to worry about because I've um, kept their names private. And the prosecutor said, well, A, that's actually factually not true. Mm -hmm. The names have leaked out, um, so and these names will continue to leak out. And two, that's so myopic because there have been threats against other FBI agents, um, and you don't think that has a, it's both an effect on other FBI agents and also on these. So I mean, it was both a sort of short-sighted view of uh, in terms of questioning and also factually wrong. Um, so there's just so much that this is consistent with the outrage in the way that she has handled this case, as you noted. From the outset, when it was not even an indictment, she has consistently done things that show both her naivete, the fact that she's not ready for prime time, and I hate to say it, but is really showing prejudice in a way that really casts aspersions on very good conservative judges who do their duty. Well, your tone was okay in the way you said <laughs> that. You. Uh, it was a harsh, but you know, a harsh <laughs> comment, but the tone was okay. Uh, Joyce Vance, uh, what are you expecting here? Uh, because Judge Cannon seems to know uh, when she can create a ruling that Jack Smith will appeal and could possibly shake her grip on the case. So, so what are you expecting from to, for us to see going forward on this? So I'm expecting more delay, which is precisely how she's handled this case from the get-go. She doesn't rule, to Andrew's point, she scheduled this hearing just an unconscionably long time 
after Trump began to make these comments, we won't see a ruling in this case for weeks if we see one forever. And the reason for that is because these rulings would be immediately appealable if they went against the government. If she were to dismiss the case or limit special counsel's ability of a, to use funding sources, then they would appeal that. And most importantly, this ruling on the change in Trump's conditions of pretrial release is something that by statute the government is entitled to take an immediate appeal of if she denies their motion. And that's exactly where Judge Cannon does not want to be in front of the 11th Circuit again. You know, I think we can't say this enough. She wasn't just reversed two times by the Court of Appeals. She entertained a fundamentally flawed action brought by Donald Trump. When you don't like the results of a search warrant and an investigation into your conduct, you wait until you're charged and then you move to suppress any evidence gained as a result of that search warrant. And that's not what Trump did. He filed a civil action that wasn't justified under any sort of legal proceedings. She entertained it. She delayed the government's use of evidence. That in large part is why we're here talking about delay again. And that's what the 11th Circuit responded to so sharply, smacking her down twice. She does not want to be back in front of them. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more, September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.